Hey guys, it's Tuesday, October the 17th, 2023. And um, this image that's in the video, my sister sent this to me. She found this at a uh, store in Texas and sent me a picture of it. So I was able to copy it. <laughs> but I read the inscription at the bottom, Zephaniah 320. And I know I've read Zephaniah because I have lots of underlines and things there, but I wanted to go back and look over this and see the context for this verse. And I was a little surprised by what I found. If you guys have never read the book of Zephaniah, <laughs> one of those minor prophets right before Haggai, then I would encourage you to do that. Um, there is some pretty big clues, especially in this one chapter. And I wanna go over some of this with you. I, none of us probably were raised in a Jewish household that kept the, the feast days. I know I wasn't, maybe some of you have been, I don't know, but I was never that familiar with the nicknames for these feast days. Now, I know that um, there's a lot of people that are watching Feast of Trumpets for the Shout of the Bridegroom, and I'm one of them, because we know in Joel 2 that the events all kick off with the blowing of trumpets in Zion, right? But there's one feast day that has a particular nickname, and you can find it in Leviticus 23. In that chapter where all of the feast days are mentioned, every last one of them is called a holy convocation, except for one. And that one is the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. That day is called a solemn assembly. And all of the verses that I can find about a gathering mention at a solemn assembly. I'll give you an example, okay? In Joel 2, verse 15, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Hmm. We also have in Daniel 12, where he talks about a time is coming when Michael will stand up. The great prince, which stands for the children of my people, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Hmm. Well, that doesn't mention solemn assembly, but I'm going to tie all this in with Zephaniah 3. So I just want you to keep listening here. There's another reference about a bridegroom coming out of her chamber. Now, we just read that in Joel 2, verse 16. Isaiah 26 says, verse 20 says, Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, Yahweh comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for iniquity the earth shall also disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So that's Isaiah 26, Daniel 12, and Joel 2. I want to read Zephaniah 3 to you now. Now, I would encourage you, go read this. It's just three chapters in the whole book. Huh. But go read chapter 3 for yourself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this chapter to you out of the King James. There's a couple of other different good translations of this, but... The King James is where I'm going to pick up here. And I almost kind of think that might be what we're seeing happening in the Middle East too. But I'm, I, I, I don't want to weigh in too much on that. Just let me read this to you and you tell me what this sounds like to you. You can say it in the comments or whatever. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. She obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in Yahweh. She drew not near to her God. Her princes within her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves. 
They gnaw not the bones to the marrow. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The just Lord, or I'm going to say Yahuwah, is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste that none passed by, but their cities are destroyed so that there is no man, that there is none inhabitant. I said, surely thou wilt fear me. Let's back up a second there. Verse 6, I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. That makes me think of 9-11. Verse 7, I said, Surely thou wilt fear me, thou wilt receive instruction, so their dwelling should not be cut off. Howsoever I punished them, but they arose early and corrupted all their doings. Verse 8, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. He will assemble the nations to pour out his indignation. That's the exact word that's used in Isaiah 26. Hide yourself until my indignation be overpassed. Hmm. Verse 9, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of Yahuwah to serve him with one consent. I don't believe that's happened yet, personally. I know they've learned, relearned Hebrew in the nation that calls itself Israel, but this appears to be of one consent with all nations, maybe all people. So, Pray about that verse. That's just my thoughts. Verse 10, For from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein that thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in their pride. Hmm. And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of Yahweh. This is not describing heaven. This is here on earth. So there won't be any poor and afflicted people in heaven. So this must be discussing a time during a millennial reign where all will be of one consent. There will be no more transgression. All will speak the same language. But I digress. Let's look at verse 13. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemies, the king of Israel, even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. The king of Israel is Yahushua. And it says the king of Israel, even Yahuwah himself, will be in the midst of thee. This is describing a time where Yahushua will, will rule and reign on this earth as the king. We don't put Yahushua above the Father, but we honor him as our king. And when we show love to our king, we're showing love also to our Father who sent him to us. So I'm going to continue reading. Verse 16, In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. Yahweh thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. 
He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. And here it is, verse 18. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden? The way I'm reading that there is that those that do keep the Father's feast days are reproached, were scoffed at, were, were put to scorn. What are you, Jewish? <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been asked that. So it says, I will gather them that are sorrow, sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden? Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth that means limps, and get, gather her that was driven out, and I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith Yahweh. Now, that's what the King James says for verse 20, but the verse that I've got up here is worded, At that time I will gather you. At that time I will bring you home. Guys, this solemn assembly sounds like something we really need to be watching for. I believe with all my heart that, according to Joel 2, everything will kick off with the shout and blowing of the trumpets in Zion. That starts the whole chapter of Joel 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, it is nigh at hand. And then back down to 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify fast, call a solemn assembly. I don't personally believe we've seen the Feast of Trumpets yet. I don't know what calendar the Father's using. We're watching. All of you are watching too, I know, or you wouldn't be listening to this more than likely. If this season is the time, then we need to be aware of the solemn assembly for the time that we will be gathered. I believe that when the wise and the foolish virgins went out in Matthew 25, they thought Yeshua was coming at that time, and he tarried, it says. So they all slumbered and slept, but then they were awakened by the shout of the bridegroom. I believe that that will happen with the blowing of the trumpets. But they weren't gathered right then. Guys, they woke up and began to trim their wicks, meaning they repented, they cut down the wick on their lamp so that their light could shine the brightest. And only then did the foolish realize they didn't have the oil to keep their lamps lit. But the wise did. And the wise didn't offer their oil to the foolish because they said, we may not have enough to get to him ourselves. Which tells me some time will pass before they get to the bridegroom. I believe that's the time of the harvest. So... If it's true that we have not seen the Feast of Trumpets yet, because I believe if we are in that season this fall, and I'm still believing that till all the possibilities are up, I don't know that we've seen the Feast of Trumpets yet. Um, and if that's the case, then I would be watching the next full moon. Um, they confirmed the sliver of the moon this uh, yesterday. If that were the Feast of Trumpets, I think we would have heard something. So I'm going to continue watching uh, the next possibility. And the last one, according to what I can figure, is October the 28th for the full moon. And coincidentally, there's a blood moon eclipse on that night. Hmm. Now, if that is when the trumpet sounds, and it says in Joel 2 that the day of the Lord is at hand, so that won't mark the day of the Lord. It will mark the day of the Lord being at hand. Then we will be watching through Yom Kippur 
on November 7th, the start of Feast of Tabernacles on November the 12th through the 19th, and then the solemn assembly could be November 19th. I'm not setting dates. I'm just sharing possibilities, and that would be based on the full moon. Uh, if it's based on the sliver, <laughs> that would have probably been yesterday for the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, October 26th. Feast of Tabernacles would start October 31st and go through November 7th. November 7th would then be the Solemn Assembly. I'm sharing all of this to say we need to be watching for the Solemn Assembly. We'll hear the shout of the bridegroom, but the gathering, the gathering takes place on a solemn assembly. That's what my understanding is from reading these, these chapters, these scriptures. You all pray on that. Ask the Father to confirm it if that's true. But that's, that's the understanding that I have about how the scriptures are reading and when the gathering will take place. So thank you all for listening. I'm just sharing my thoughts here with you. But there's still much to watch, and there's more to come. So keep looking up, and stay on that narrow way. The reward in the end is invaluable. You all be blessed, and thank you for listening.